Good evening, everyone. It's Andrew's Orchid Balcony. Um, I'm just going to do a quick repot of some Oncidiums or some Oncidium intergenerics. Um, I got a little surprise towards the end, but uh, you'll see when I get there. But yeah, I'm just going to repot these. I do, I grow in like semi hydro, my version of it. Um, this one's doing kind of poorly. I just got this, all of the, all except for the last plant I got from a, um, auction at the local orchid society from a member that had passed. And I just kind of did a quick repot during the winter time because of the fact that, um, a lot of the plants had <laughs> severe bug infestation. And this one, as you can see, is not very happy. But that looks like because I just put the boot ball in here in um, some LECA. So, yeah. So what I will be doing, I do like to use a mixture of the LECA with um, a little bit of sphagnum moss just to help facilitate wicking. But this needs to come out because it's staying too moist and no air in the middle here. So I'll clean this up. Shoot. And I also have some sphagnum that I've basically chopped up real fine that I'll be mixing in with the LECA. Like I said, just to help facilitate the wicking ability. So, switch this up real quick. And see if we can't get this plant back on track. You know, honestly, I, <laughs> I forgot that I even did this. Because I kept looking at this plant and saying, what is going on with it? Why is it doing this? The other ones like this are doing okay, you know? And this one just is not liking it, partly because of this nasty moss here. So. And since the days are starting to get a little bit longer and I'm getting more light in my grow space and the temperatures are increasing, I figured I'll do this now. If any of you know my repotting style, I don't really fuss over the plants like that. And I have pretty good success. I do have some rubbing alcohol here in a spray bottle, 70%, and some hydrogen peroxide. I rarely use hydrogen peroxide on my plants because I just find adverse effects, but if I since this one is, has a little bit of mold, or not mold, um, uh, fungal or bacterial infection on the leaves, I may spray it, but I think I won't. The alcohol I'm going to use for the other plants, I have a brassia and then a unknown, I believe it's some kind of a brassia, I have to wait till it flowers, because um, like I said, I got it from the auction. It wasn't labeled. Um, so yeah, it's probably a ways away from flowering because it was a huge plant and there was a lot of like dead stuff in the middle. So when I repotted it, I kind of just clipped off the outer new growths to get it into a nice sized pot <laughs> because I had, I had really just cleaned up my grow space and organize everything so I could have room to walk on the floor <laughs> on the floor got all the orchids off the floor got all the shelves reorganized so I would have space for all my plants to sit happily and then I go to this meeting and there's a emergency auction or whatever you want to call it because of the passing of the member and here I go and I buy a bunch of more plants and fill up all the spaces I just opened up but I couldn't pass up these plants, some of these plants, because they're 
one, I, I really want the Brassia Rex. And, it, and it's a decent sized plant. And I think, how much did I pay for it? I think I maybe paid maybe the highest $20 for it. The other plant is unknown. I think because it was unknown, a lot of the members didn't want to get it. I think I paid maybe $10 for that one too. And I had bought some other things like a Catlia that was pretty huge too. And that one was really infested with scale. So I ended up having to pitch it because it just was not, it was not doing well. And it eventually kept getting whittled down and whittled down in size. And then I just said, you know what? <laughs> it's not worth it anymore. And honestly, my fray collection is um, getting bigger. And so are my pathiopetalums. So, and my oncidiums. So I'm thinking that I might start thinking to get rid of some of my cat peas and just um, go with them so this is pretty much what I'm gonna do to it I think I think just for the heck of it I'll give it a little spray of the hydrogen peroxide because of the fact that it has some of this decaying material here at the base Dump this. but anyways this plant is Bellara Big Shot Hilo Sparkle. I think um, Orchids and Kitties. I think that's the name of it. Just got one of these at, their, at a show that she just recently went to. But I'll just spray this down. And I'm not afraid to get the whole plant wet with this because I have plenty of air circulation. It is later in the day, but I'm not really worried, like I said fizzing a little bit, not too bad. Yep, I should I should not have let this go that long. Without um actually repotting it. So we'll let that sit for a little bit. I'm gonna do is take the old Lekka and like I said just mix a little bit of sphagnum in there just to give it a little bit more water retentiveness because I grow all my plants in these clear pots that I have all these slits in and then I set them in a mask pot that has a little tiny reservoir so and this is and this is what I call semi hydro <laughs> for me, and it seems to work pretty well. Okay, I'm gonna just go rinse this off real quick. I'm not gonna bother going through the root system. I mean, they're all pretty much gone, but I need something to be able to hold the plant into place. So, I'll just put this down in here. And I'll also be adding some of the Osmocote. Just to help fertilize throughout the year. Sometimes I get a little bit lazy with the fertilization. And then we'll just fill it in.
some people would say to wait for new root growth. But when something's suffering like this with rot, it's, I don't think it's focusing its energy on growing. It's focusing its energy on saving itself. So I needed to get it out of that situation and put in something a little bit better. I've been putting this live moss <laughs> in quotations on top of my plants too to help facilitate humidity retention in the pot and it will look better once it starts to get more moist due to the cold I really have stopped kind of watering but as it's starting to get warmer I'm using my um, misting system a little bit more so things will start to pop or grow again but that's pretty much the repot on this one and due to the fact that it had such a huge um, plug of moss in the middle like that it was actually preventing the rest of the pot from getting the moisture and the humidity so I think that's why this moss died like that. But we'll go on to the Brassia Rex here. <clears throat> so I'm thinking that this might want a little bit more moisture retentive material. And plus I did see, because I just used some bigger orchid bark um, because of the time that I did it, because I didn't want I didn't want the little bit of roots that I left on it to rot, but the orchid bark is starting to get a little fungus growing on it. Um, I don't really get rid of my stuff. I'll go through this, pick out all this bark, and sterilize the leka again. Doesn't make sense to throw that out. So you can see the condition of the leaves on this one. Probably some spider mite got to it. During the winter time, I generally get some spider mite and then it goes away. And because of this thing was kind of suffering from its transition, it probably sent out a signal, come eat me. So it got attacked and I'll show you the other problem that we're dealing with with this orchid. I don't know, let me see if you can see that. The fluffy white stuff there, that is um, mealybug. Tons of mealybug on this stuff, on these plants that came. Scale and mealybug was a bad um, infestation. So I'm gonna take off these sheaths. You can see here's a nice mother mealybug. <laughs> and yeah, there's all kinds. So I'll take off these sheaths and spray it down with rubbing alcohol. Yeah, I mean, you can see all this nastiness. The, the sad thing is this, these plants weren't half bad, but because of the timing, the, the repot, and now the bugs getting out of control because of the um, winter neglect that I do kinda, they're kind of suffering a little bit, but they'll, they'll spring back. And plus two, I put my plants out in the summertime and I rarely have any issues. Well, I open up my um, balcony, I should say. And I rarely have issues with bugs because I often see wasps and things like that crawling on the surface. And they're really looking for the protein that these little bugs provide. So I'm just gonna spray down the um, whole plant here with the rubbing alcohol and that will kill the mealy bugs and hopefully any spider mites that are still maybe living they really they really did a number on this um brassia rex it's kind of sad because the leaves were not that marked but something got a hold of it and it did not like it. it. I mean, it could also be from 
me spraying my plants, um, some kind of fungal infection from water sitting on the leaves. But for the most part, none of my other plants have that. But because this wasn't my plant from the beginning, maybe that has something to do with it. And then I'll just do the same with this plant here. Has new growth. This one was really, sorry for not being in frame. This one was really infected with um, mealybug. I sprayed it a few weeks ago and they are kind of coming back. So I'll give it another spray. I was just at the plant store today looking for some insecticidal um, systemics, but uh, there's not too many options and the ones that were there, I'm not going to say that they weren't, that they were super expensive, but it was $30 for a bottle and I don't know, I just, I just don't feel like spending that right now for something that doesn't even guarantee that it's going to kill the, the critters, so I know for the most part if I spray these things down with this rubbing alcohol that it will dehydrate those little um, pests and kill them off. Hopefully it will get to any eggs. I really didn't do that when I first repotted them. I did a bleach dip because I wanted any um, bacteria or fungal spores to be killed. So, sorry if I'm not always in frame. And I should, I guess I should say, <laughs> don't do as I do because you should be sterilizing and all kinds of stuff between plants and not using the same scissors and all that stuff and spraying with hydrogen peroxide but I just find that my stuff has been okay I guess we all take makes our choices about how precautious we want to be when it comes to this type of stuff so put some Bark in it too. Put a little bit of this moss in here. Not too much. This is a brassia. But do like to be a little bit drier. No, just backfill. So I'm trying to point the new growths away from the center of the pot and I'm going to centralize this and then just fill it in. I did see a few little root tips kind of coming out, getting green. Like I said, it's starting to warm up more in the grow area on my balcony. So things are starting to come to life again. 
Put some of the awesome coat in there. I don't have too technical of kitchen sessions, I know. Don't 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 kill me for it. <laughs> I don't wear gloves. I don't sterilize everything. I I find that I don't have too bad of um, a success rate though, so. So that's pretty much it for the Brassier Rex. I probably won't put any moss on the top of this one because like I said I do kind of like it a little bit drier I find but yep that's that one repotted too Maybe someone can help me ID it. It has longer pseudobulbs. As you can see, it looks like three leaves on some of them. On the majority of them, three leaves coming out of the top. But yet, yeah, I have no clue what it could be. Some kind of Brassia hybrid, I believe. And that has new growth coming, so that's what really inspired me to get this thing going. Want to get, I mean, this isn't doing that bad. I just want to get this bark out of there. And this one is a bunch of pieces. This one's kind of, it has a few roots there. This one's kind of holding everything together here. This one, yeah, this one was difficult because it had such a creeping rhizome. I mean, you can see this one's down here and this one's up here, it's four inches rising. This one isn't that bad with critters. I wonder if it, nah, no, it's still got to be some kind of a brassia. Hopefully I'll be able to ID it. Okay, now to, now to piece it all back together before it goes in the pot.
And I did some cutting on the rhizome too when I first got it just to make sure that we didn't have any of the fasarium. Any fasarium going on in here. sterilize my media is I boil it and then I let it dry or I'll microwave it with a little bit of water inside a plastic Ziploc bag and that tends to sterilize it. I'll do that for like 10 minutes in the microwave and you got to have it a little bit moist otherwise it will not cook in the microwave sufficiently. Because microwaves work by stimulating the water mole molecules. I'm basically just backfilling it, trying to get contact with the bottom of the rhizome or the base of the pseudobulb so that when the new roots come out, they have something to get into right away. And you know, it's, it's kind of, I'm not, <laughs> I'm going to say this, the way, the way I grow plants is by trial and error. Honestly, for the most part, I mean, I watch Roger and Ed and who else is another one? Miss Orchid Girl. They try to explain a lot about the culture of each type of orchid. But honestly, I find that, I mean, you, you got to know some things, but you got to kind of wing it for the type of environment you have. Otherwise, you can try to do everything by the book. And it just isn't going to survive because there's going to be probably something missing like humidity or light or heat or coolness. So you just got to kind of do it what's going to work best for your environment. And I don't really have any issues with that. So that's how my style is, is just watching what the orchid does and watching what it tells me and kind of go from there. I'll just spray these leaves a little bit. I don't know if I see some mealy bug down in the center of the crown there or not. But we'll see if we can't dehydrate them if they are there. Okay, I'll just move this one out of the way. And we'll get to the huge one. Now, this is going to be a tight fit in this pot. I'm gonna give this one a little bit, pretty much all of this sphagnum. It came growing in potting media, like um, peat moss with perlite. So it likes it a little bit moister, more moist I should say. And and it's a pretty big plant.
good. This is actually about the, the mix that I have for my Oncidium Sherry Baby. And that thing has roots like crazy. It had seven spikes over the winter. And it has tons of new growth. It has about five new growths already coming on it. So, okay. Now, be amazed. <laughs> so, here's my hand. Can you see that? So this Oncidium is actually Wilsonara um, Tropical Breeze Everglade. Yeah, Tropic Breeze Ever Everglade. So this plant is known for its nine foot flower spikes, which it has two spikes on here, but they were damaged, but it also has a few more coming. So I repot unpotted it. It came, it came bare root in a sense of where they just pulled it out of the pot and there was still the, the potting media. Um, so I basically rinsed off all the media, cut out the center here where there was a lot of old root and junk. And now I'll just try and fit this thing into a pot and see what we can do. This is the biggest, this is the biggest size clear pot I got, so it's gotta go in here. I'm trying to tuck the roots down into it. When it, it just came, so I mean, obviously it's cold out and the seller didn't do that great of a job protecting it <laughs> the spikes broke I, I got it with spikes and the spikes were broken and some of the new growths had rotted off I don't know if that was from the cold or from the plant being moist it was only in transit for like two or three days but with the cold temperatures and the moisture I could believe that the new growths probably rotted because of that I'm glad to see that the bulbs are still firm and the leaves are still nice nice color and everything so it looks like it wasn't damaged too much but we'll see what we can do see if we can't get some more new girls to come and now I'm just kind of holding it in place and I'll just backfill this one too so yeah I'm, I'm excited about this it does have a flower spike right here so hopefully even though I'm repotting it, hopefully I can get this to continue to grow and extend. And since it came from Florida, I had to repot it because I had gotten a Phragmopedium one time from Florida and did not repot it for a while. And then when I did come to repot it, I found a, I think it was, I think it's called a New Guinea worm in the pot so now now whenever I get something from Florida it automatically gets repotted because I don't want to I don't want to bring any exotic pests into my grow space so it gets repotted sprayed down looked over and this one looks pretty pretty good besides the little bit of damage that was done but I believe it should pull through. Let's see if we can pack this media in a little bit more. But yeah, I'll have to I'll have to get the camera off the tripod to show you how how big this plant really is. Kind of zoom out on it. So all these plants will be going into a mask, a mask pot, and that has a little reservoir. And we'll 
we'll go from there. And from, for those of you that kind of follow me a little bit, I know I don't post as often. I pretty much try to keep my green, I mean my growing space at 70 degrees or higher. So that's, the, that's probably one of the main reasons why I can grow a lot of my orchids so moist because I keep them going over in the winter. The only thing I don't supplement is light in the winter time. But other than that, they get heat. They get a little bit of food because a lot of my plants continue to grow unless, you know, they need a specific dormancy or something, then I let them go dormant a little bit. And that's pretty much that. So this is this is what this one is called. I know this is probably not as informational as some of the other YouTube growers, but hey, it works for me. So I don't know what the best way to show you this plant, but there's the top of the spikes there. I mean, the bulbs are at least a good eight inches. The leaves are, I would say, anywhere from, I would say at least 30 inches, but yeah. So hopefully we can get this baby growing and hopefully I'll be able to show you the spike in a few months. In a few, I don't even know how long this spike takes to, to mature, but um, yeah, I'm sure it takes probably at least a month or two just to grow to its full height of nine foot. So yeah, but there also is another little tiny spike in here too. So, so I do got two spikes coming. You know, I'm almost wondering if I should should sacrifice the spikes to get this thing to kick out some new growths, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Hopefully, these spikes will branch, you know, the seller. A little bit disappointing when I contacted him. You know, he made he made really no effort to protect these spikes, and for what I paid for this plant, it's kind of it's kind of ridiculous. So, no effort was made to protect them, stake them, shield them in any sort of way. The box just was horrid, the way he packed it. This, I mean, this whole plant was basically just wrapped in paper. Then he put one little piece of tape on the side of the box to tape it to the, to the, like the box. And then he put another box over it, kind of like sandwiched them together. And let's just say, you know, you know the post office, they play football with your stuff, so... I mean, we all know how things get handled, and you would think that some care would have been taken or taken to prevent something like this, <laughs> especially when you're on eBay and you know people are going to leave comments and remarks and stuff like that. So a little bit disappointed, but we'll see what happens. I'm happy with the rest of the plant. Like I said, hopefully it's still... It's still pretty um, solid, so I'm thinking it will survive. But yeah, that's that's my repotting video. Hopefully you guys got something out of it. If not, maybe a few laughs. But I'll see you later. All right, bye-bye.